Friday night. It is the Justin McDonald Show right here on TalkCast PDX. We're on Facebook Live, YouTube, and Twitch. And we're getting the, the triple cast in there. And, of course, then you can just watch on demand whenever you like at TalkCastPDX.com as well. Hey, we got a great show tonight. we got a great guest. I hope you're having a good time out there tonight. But we got Jeremy Scott into the para-abnormal tonight. I'm looking forward to this little chat. I like Bigfoot and UFOs and all those kinds of crazy things out there in the world. And he knows a lot about all of it. So looking forward to chatting with Jeremy Scott tonight on the Justin McDonald Show. And, you know, also we're going to have a little segment right at the end called Things I Say While I'm Driving. Yeah, it's all going to be on the program tonight. So sit back, relax, hang out, you know, and watch the program. We appreciate you. We'll be right back with Jeremy Scott and into the pair abnormal. Friday night, we are having ourselves a good time like always, and I love to have guests on. That's part of the whole program, and I have a guest on tonight who I've worked with for a while, known for a while, and uh, I, I dig his show. Um, it is Jeremy Scott from Into the Pair Abnormal. I always say that wrong sometimes. Why do I do that? I said paranormal a couple of times, and then I was like, no, it's pair abnormal. Should I take my mask off? Yeah, you don't have to mask up. We're <laughs> Zoom calling, but I like that. Mask. Fu- Show that mask I, again. That is a beautiful no. mask. Ooh. I'm finally, I'm finally uncensored. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been censored my whole life. I can now take the mask off. Uh, that's pa- right. Uh, parabnormal. So it's uh, somewhere between abnormal and paranormal, as I uh, like to say. And uh, I came up with that title not only because we do talk about the paranormal, uh, but we also talk about the abnormal. And uh, much like your show, uh, no politics. Yeah, I don't do politics here. You know, it's just I get enough of it uh, day in, day out. I try to skim through politics stuff on all the social media platforms, whether it be Facebook or you don't get as much political stuff, I think, on Instagram. You get more activist stuff, I think, on Instagram than actual political uh, you know, interactions, people talking about this and that and the two party this and blah, 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 blah. I just... I I live in a world of individuals. (laughs) So uh, tell me a little bit about your show, though. Tell me how you started. I'd kind of like to know that. And, uh, you know, how long you've been doing the show. It You know, it is it's a hard thing to do the Internet uh, programs. It's just a lot of competition, a lot of stuff going on. And you got to know how to promote yourself. And we do that here. But we're here at TalkCast PDX. We're trying to build a local network. Right. So we're trying to have our local uh, podcasts and programs go out to the community and they can, you know, come and do their shows here and stuff. But I'd like to know how you got going and got started as far as doing your own show. 
Well, first and foremost, I'm Pacific uh, Northwest, raised, born, lived here all but four months of my life. So uh, everything about the Pacific Northwest and about Portland uh, is is what I'm all about. Um, I do a fair, I, I would say I'm probably uh, well known in the community. I mean, not as well known as I would like to be, but uh, <laughs> doing 12 years of college basketball, 10 years of uh, high school football and and basketball, and then of course taking into the paranormal out to some of these uh, shows, Bigfoot conventions, UFO oh, yeah. festivals, that sort of thing. Uh, we That's get some be fun. It's a blast, you know. As as you know, as a radio guy, as an audio guy, doing this remotely uh, is a rush, you know. To basically take the gear there, set it up, uh, originate, uh, do live talk uh, is amazing, and we talk with some pretty awesome people. Uh, it's not just uh, UFOs and and ghosts uh, and, and Bigfoot that we talk about, though, on the on the program. We we talk about, you know, some of those subjects that are that are kind of hidden um, that are maybe uh, in the middle of the newspaper, not on the front page, uh, if if at all, mostly not uh, in the newspaper uh, off the beaten path uh, subjects, the weird stuff uh, that, that, that doesn't doesn't get as, as much time of day. Um, and that's kind of what, what my show is about. You know, I, I do Saturday nights and, and it, you know, it's past the dinner hour and, uh, especially this time of the year, it, it's dark early. And so it's a perfect, um, mood for the show. And we try to match that, uh, yeah. with, with what we talk about. Um, in fact, uh, we're going to be talking about the Nephilim coming up on the program uh, which is a very, very fascinating subject. Last week, we talked about uh, Bigfoot. And week before that, it was UFOs. And yeah. um, the week after next, it's going to be COVID-19 uh, uh, or yeah. COVID-20 or COVID-21 or whatever we're calling it. COVID-23 now, I hear. Um, COVID-23? I haven't even heard that. Oh, I'm, you I, haven't heard of COVID-23? I'm still like on COVID-18. I don't even know. <laughs> My head's still spinning from this whole situation. Um, you know, as far as your program goes, you, you address a lot of different things. How do you uh, how do you address the like the naysayers? You know, because our our world, we're both in the talk and news world, um, in the radio business as well as doing our own solo projects. And how does it, how does it? Um, I'm trying to figure out how to word this properly so not to offend anybody else. <laughs> but the the old angry white man crowd, as far as the talk radio world goes, um, and then you have this little niche world that's actually really starting to flourish and come about with guys like yourself, Glad Lewis, a few others. You're, you're really starting to come about flower, I guess, if you will. How do you address those naysayers that would say, oh, that's just all fake and this just, you know, that's national. Well, aren't, po aren't, aren't politics fake too? Yeah. I mean, okay. I so uh, let's see. Isn't, um, <laughs> isn't isn't professional wrestling fake i love professional wrestling i love uh it. and i'm a big wrestling fan i watch it oh, i watch five different shows last <clears throat> night okay off topic here i watched uh impact wrestling uh turning point they put it live up on their youtube which was uh their 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 uh pay-per-view i guess special and then i watched the return of mlw major league wrestling last night and then i turned on aew all elite wrestling that was my wednesday God bless you, brother. In the house. So I love me some wrestling. But if you want to talk about fake, <laughs> I mentioned all these things that are fake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's, it's not any different. Those are, are marketable. Those have a falling. Th those have an audience. As I've always said on my program, you know, I don't make up anybody's mind for them. They ultimately are the decider of their own truth. And what they accept as evidence on any subject is, you know, between them and their maker. Yeah, uh, I present uh, a, a good argument, I think, on the program and, and, and my guests do as well, depending on what we're talking about on a on a weekly basis. And look, it, it stands on itself. Do I believe every story uh, when people call in? No, but I ask darn good questions in order to try to bring as much information out to uh, put myself into a position to to judge somebody's story on its credibility and i've also had guests on the program who have asked them some questions that i thought would be pretty easy questions or something that i would have asked if in that situation 
and uh, the answers have have not been satisfactory. And so I have left dis- disappointed on a few occasions. I'm sure the listeners have as well. It's just the nature of the beast. It's live. It's what we talk about. And uh, not everything is is polished and finished when it goes out on the air. But um, we definitely have a dialogue and a discussion, and that's what it's all about. Um, whether or not it's true or not, or people want to believe in it or not, um, shouldn't preclude us from from having the conversation. Uh, in my opinion, and that's do you what take I do. Callers? Do you take callers on your program? Uh, absolutely. So, uh, it, it, and I don't throw the number out as much as I probably should. Um, <laughs> I I don't. Um, make it a point because it's a conversation and me and the guests are are getting along. We're great. If people want to jump in, great. Uh, I'll fit them in wherever, wherever they, they want to call. There's no designated uh, open lines per se portion of the program. What I've always just said on the program is allow us to get started, to get the juices flowing, maybe get through the first segment and we'll lay down the groundwork. And, and by all means, I would much rather have you call in now and ask the question uh, then two hours from now, when we're deep into another subject, and we've forgotten where the conversation. I always hated that uh, was two hours I, ago. So I hosted a talk uh, yes, show. callers are encouraged. And- uh, I lost you there for a second. I blurped out a little bit. Uh, what did you? What would you say? What did you say? I, I lost nothing. you for a second. No, nothing. That was it. Oh, <laughs> uh, I used to do a talk show with a good friend of mine. He's actually uh, doing a podcast uh, here locally now called Citizen Smith. Uh, we did a talk show in Anchorage. I love Alaska. Citizen Smith. Yeah, we, we did a talk show in Anchorage, Alaska for a few years. We actually won some awards. We had a great time, you know, but it was more of a political show. Um, he was on the left. I was on the right. And, you know, that's the dynamic we had at that point. I've grown a lot. Very original. Very original. <laughs> well, I've grown a lot since then. It was called the Citizen Soapbox. And, you know, it was Citizen Smith and Citizen McDonald. And we had a great time. And, um and he's loving doing his podcast with with you doing your live show. He, lo- he, he misses doing his live show. He'll be doing a live show at some point, but do you like doing the podcast thing? You know, like us hanging out. I mean, mine's more of a live stream show, but do you like just doing the straight podcast thing instead of having the well, I, interaction? Or no, do you, my, my, do you prefer that. I, I do prefer the live. Yeah. The, the live aspect because yeah, I mean, you can put together a show, but there's only so much interaction you can have, um, and there's only so many viewpoints you can open yourself up to when you're having a conversation between you and yourself or you and a guest. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, when you invite the listeners in and you invite them into a chat room and they can chime in or it's Facebook Live or it's YouTube Live or it's Twitter Live, and, yeah. and they can literally chime in on the spot and they can interact with the guests. A lot of times the guests are in the chat and there's interaction there. And it's uh, in it, it, in my mind, it it's it's the way to go. There, there's no other way to to go if if you're really serious about having an interactive show. I think doing it live is is the way to go. I I prefer it. Number one, it's a whole lot easier because I can sit down. Three hours we do sometimes four hours. This weekend we're doing five. Wow, um, How do you, man, you're an Iron Man. Uh, we just we just do it uh, when when the information needs to get out there and it's so important we 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 just do it and um, yeah, that's awesome. Um, can you hang around for another one? Just one. Absolutely. All right, absolutely. we're gonna take a quick break. We'll come back. It's the Justin McDonald Show. We're on Talkcast PDX. We're on Facebook Live, YouTube, and Twitch. All of our channels. And of course, the podcast will be out there anywhere you want to listen to podcasts. But I prefer you go to TalkCastPDX.com. And you can also stop by the JustinMcDonaldShow.com. You can buy a t-shirt, support the show. But we'll be right back. Stick around.
the Justin McDonald show right here on Talkcast PDX, and I'm chatting with Jeremy Scott on this Friday night. Jeremy, uh, into the pair of normal. Tell people when it actually airs live and uh, tell them about your website. Yeah, so live Saturday evenings, uh, 6 to 9 for those here in Portland or anywhere along the West Coast. Parabnormalradio.com. And then if you go to, of course, TalkCastPDX.com, you can find the information there. Excellent. Um, who, who do you have on this week? I'd like to know since, uh, I mean, this will be a little dated if someone's watching this later on, but I would like to know because there are people watching right now um, who you have on tomorrow. Yeah, we've got uh, L.A. Marzulli, and L.A. Marzulli uh, is just a fantastic guest. I've had him on the program a couple of times. Uh, he travels the uh, the world literally looking into the Nephilim, which are these giants that are talked about in the Bible. And there's some talk that... I never uh, heard the, of the thing. Or maybe the I Neph- have. I just... Nephilim? The, the, yeah, the Nephilim, N-E-P-H-I-L-I-M. And uh, these are giants that are talked about uh, in, in the Bible. And uh, he has linked them to these uh, these structures that um, are a little bit weird and mysterious. So we'll be talking about those and also some skulls that have been found um, that are unlike, you know, the skulls that we would think uh, would be uh, from typical uh, humans like... Uh, uh, you and I, bowl, um, just a huge he, head. Yeah, yeah. So uh, on the trail of the Nephilim, and then um, we'll be doing a, a special show on Sunday as well uh, oh, at wow. five five p.m. to seven p.m. Uh, here in Portland, and uh, we'll be talking with um, a gentleman who's written a book based on some experience that he's had, some mystical experiences, and has a very interesting take on a pathway forward. Uh, uh, in the future to kind of get us out of this uh, hellhole that we're in currently. Uh, he calls it the great change. I call it the human purge. Huh. <laughs> and uh, there's be- some there's some purging going on right now with this whole COVID-19 situation uh, because of obviously the nature of the virus yeah. and uh, the conspiracies um, that are uh, related to it. And we're not talking about conspiracy theories. We're talking about conspiracies. <laughs> which are different than, than conspiracy theories conspiracy yeah. theory, the theory that you have about a conspiracy conspiracies are actually people conspiring uh to do something and um so the message that that uh, my guest why he has his on will be uh delivering on sunday uh very important for these times especially in the day and age that we're in yeah i mean um it is kind of scary uh, i hear a lot of people talk about you know they don't they think it's just government mind control and all that stuff going on. And I don't want to wear a mask and this and that. And, you know, maybe I'm naive. Maybe I, you know, I've just taken the proper precautions, you know, wearing my mask when I'm out and washing my hands and doing the things you normally should do, not eating, you know, I can't go to a bar and eat peanuts out of the bar. That's gross anyways. But I'm just saying that cutting down on some of those things, I feel really bad for the restaurant industry and the hospitality industry because they're just really taking a huge hit. Um, and next week, I'm going to have uh, a great guest. We're going to talk to Leather Stores um, from, oh. the, yeah, from Notable Rot. And, of course, I think uh, the new donut place is really what we're going to talk about. But, uh, you know, I really you, do you get donuts me. out of the deal. I hope I get some donuts out of the deal. <laughs> I really do. Um, but, yeah, it's, you know, I think it's going to get worse. I think it's going things are going to get pretty bad um, over the next uh, eight weeks. And then yeah. I think things will start to really turn around uh, once the vaccine, I guess. If people even take the vaccine, a lot of people don't even want to take it. Um, yeah, and right, rightfully so, because Bill Gates is involved in the vaccine, and Bill <laughs> Gates is, is not a... Um, <clears throat> Have you done a I mean, show I, on that? Have you done a I show? Did, I did. Uh, we called it Gate Stoppo inoculation, not Gestapo, because we're almost in the Gestapo age. But in this case, it's Gate Stoppo inoculation. A couple months ago, actually, we you know we've been ahead of this this COVID trend. Uh, I believe the first show we did was in January of twenty nine. Uh, excuse me, January of twenty twenty. Right. Uh, and of course, we know that everybody started hearing about it in in March, uh, at least here in the. Uh, in the U.S., you know, I made the point about COVID twenty three, which is a a movie by uh, uh, a Michael. Movie? It, it's a movie by Michael Bay, and it's set in the year twenty twenty two, and it talks about a virus known as COVID twenty three, uh, which has mutated, 
uh, all around the world in pandemic like fac- uh, fashion like we're seeing now, uh, except uh, by this point, we are in week number 213 of lockdown. Wow. wow. And so and so I, I fictional. Yes. OK. Um, we, we understand that that is a story much like is the story in this book that I just finished reading Wuhan, but based on real events. Now, in Wuhan and in China. Hey, can you move uh, your mask out of the way? We can't. I can't see your face. Sorry. There you go. Is that better? <laughs> yeah, you were hiding, literally hiding behind the microphone. Okay. okay. <laughs> but go ahead. You read this book, Wuhan. Yeah, so this book, uh, Wuhan, talks about some really, really extreme measures that were taken in China. And we're talking about extreme measures like basic martial law. And if you do not allow yourself to be taken somewhere into quarantine, they were welding people inside their homes. Wow. They were relocating people from infected buildings and giving them stipends, basically relocating them from the slums into a nicer part of town to stop the spread. It's I like just this protection program. Yeah. And I saw a, uh, a post from a friend of mine on Facebook today uh, giving us a recap of what day one and total lockdown in Australia is like. Mm. Total lockdown. You were only allowed, I think, to leave once per week for groceries. Wow. And in Australia, um, in Australia total lockdown is on and they have zero new cases imagine that so imagine all i all i'm saying is in (laughs) cases where you have done extreme lockdown methods yeah it has proven to be successful the economic impacts have proven to be shorter and less severe what we have is knucklehead thinking we have people who aren't ready to be a collective one the world is one it is all connected Many people, when we talk about extraterrestrials, believe that those are really we're just they're just humans. They're just advanced humans and they're here and they're trying to tell us a message. And that message is stop trying to kill everyone. Stop, you know, this nuclear war thing. And uh, maybe this virus is is what we're going to need to wake you up. Uh, I'm not saying that the aliens yeah. created the, the, the virus. But what I am saying is that there's so much at stake here. And you have hospitalizations that are at a grander scale that we haven't seen in this country in decades yeah. at levels worse than world wars. I mean, and it is about time that people wake up and realize, and I'm not saying the people who have been doing what they've been asked to do. I'm talking about the people who have deliberately not been doing what they've been asked to do, because as we've been seeing with some of these executive orders, they are coming with actual law enforcement. It just sounds like sometimes it just sounds like a bunch of spoiled, rotten little kids. You know, it's like, I don't want to eat my vegetables. I, you know, I don't want to do the right thing. And uh, you're stamping all over my freedom. And, you know, maybe to some degree that does feel like that. But, you know, you got to think of the greater good to some degree, I, I would think. But um, let's just hope we get out of this mess and we can all go drink beers together at some point uh, and have. Conscious yeah, I mean, I know. We- here in Oregon, they're I don't trying want to, to get go down on a Friday night, but I, I feel like having beers, you know. <laughs> well, they're trying to do the to-go cocktails. Yeah, right. So you can drive through. I mean, and the legislature have... doesn't even convene though until January, so they yeah. can't even do anything. Well, they have drag queens now trying to sell food in North uh, North Portland or the Pearl District. We and love drag queens. To-go yeah. cocktails uh, might be what saves, but then of course you have people. Which brings up another point. You have people driving to establishments, getting to-go cocktails in their car, and we're going to expect that they're not going to partake before they get back home? It's like, you know, guys going to the cannabis store and lighting up in the parking lot. It's like, you know, it's a big no. That does not happen, Justin McDonald. How dare you make such an assumption? I've seen it happen with my own eyes. (laughs) So there. Um well, it's Friday night, uh, on a little lighter side of things. Uh, just before I let you go, I would like to talk about the Yeti, the Sasquatch, the Bigfoot. Oh, oh, um, okay. I've just always been a big uh, kind of like fan of that side of things. I used to read like, I used to have these Bigfoot comic books and stuff back in the day. And I, I always loved uh, uh, the comics and the, and the Bigfoot and the Yeti stories. Anyways, w- nice. What is the latest on Bigfoot? Who, who's seen him? 
uh, where was the last sightings, um, possible sightings of such a creature, uh, whether it be Yeti, uh, you know, Bigfoot, snow, uh, abominable snowman, whatever? Well, uh, funny you should ask, because our friends up in Washington uh, would be interested to know that uh, earlier this year, actually, in January of this year, Actually, the day I went to the Squatch Fest in Longview, <laughs> the Squatch what, Fest, I love the that. Squatch Fest was the day that this broke. Washdot, WSDOT released video of purported Sasquatch sightings on Stevens Pass and also on Snoqualmie Pass within days of each other. The, the Department of Transportation in Washington. So I would say somewhere, maybe up along I-90, uh, you might have a good chance of... Um, of finding Sasquatch or Bigfoot. Of course, we're all talking about the same thing for the most part. Yeah. We're just talking about uh, different names, abominable right. snowman. Uh, the list goes on. In fact, on my program this past week, when we talked creatures of the wild, we called it that because in different parts of the world, uh, you know, Bigfoot are yeah. called different names, but we're pretty much talking about the same favorite. thing. Yeah, Yeti's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, Yeti. And I do recommend this book. Uh, this is from Animal Planet. It's Finding Bigfoot. It's Finding from Bigfoot. the uh, stars of the uh, Animal Planet show, Cliff Berkman and uh, Bobo and whatnot. Um, yeah. And it's a very good introductory book. I found it at a bookstore in Hood River. Highly recommend it. Uh, it's very introductory for anybody at the basic level, but was very informative for me, uh, who I consider myself maybe at the intermediate level. <laughs> now I have two books I have to read, Wuhan and uh, The Animal Planet. The I've got an extra copy of Wuhan. Oh, great. I, don't, I might have to disinfect it, though, before <laughs> I hand it off to you, give it to it you better with be... sterilized gloves. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I want to aerosol spray all over that thing. <laughs> Well, um, I appreciate you hanging out on a Friday night. Uh, this is my what pleasure. We podcasts like to do, and I just like to talk to people about subjects that we're interested in. And you know, we're not uh, recreating the wheel or doing anything amazing. We just want to have great conversations with people in our local community, which is Portland, Oregon, and the vicinity. Uh, and you know, I'm glad that you're a local guy and that you're here and you're doing your show from from here. And I think it's just a, a fun time. And I think I think that we can keep things light hopefully over the next uh, eight or nine weeks while we get through the, this pandemic, creep through this pandemic uh, and have a transfer of power in our nation's capital. So let's just hope everything goes smooth, right? Yeah, we certainly have had a, enough turmoil uh, wow. for the year. I mean, I don't know how much more uh, we can we can go through. I've just never seen anything like this in my lifetime. No, and, and, and neither have... Years. Neither have uh, your parents or, or grandparents if they're still yeah. alive. Yeah, my, my parents are pushing 80. So, um, yeah, it's really a, a weird time. And I'm glad that uh, you could take time out on your Friday night and hang out with oh, us. Oh, it's pleasure. Tell the, tell the folks what time your show is tomorrow, just one more time. Yeah, it is uh, Saturday night at 6 Pacific. We go till 9 Pacific. And then we are on again Sunday night this week as we are the fourth week uh, of the month on Sundays, usually, except for Christmas. Right. Uh, and so two shows this week, just go to parabnormalradio.com and you can get all the information there. I'd love to uh, talk with you then. And you can link to Jeremy's program as well at TalkCast PDX and uh, check things out there. Uh, Jeremy Scott into the Parabnormal. Thanks for hanging out with us on a Friday night, getting a little weird, talking about weird things. I love that. And uh, what I'm about. <laughs> we'll chat with you later. Yeah. Rock on, Justin. Nice to talk with you. Peace out.
segment I like to call Things I Say While I'm Driving. You know, just little thoughts that I have, little quips uh, while I'm driving, you know, that pop into my brain. So check this out. Some of the things uh, I think about while I'm driving. Yeah, I have a kind of a lengthy commute every day. I have a lot of time to think. And, you know, the one thing I was thinking of recently was, you know, Jesus said, everybody love everybody. Oh, wait. Maybe that was Jackie Moon from the Flint Tropics. Either way, everybody love everybody. I love that slogan. I love that phrase. I try to live my life that way. So think about that a little bit, how people should do that a little more. And then I was also thinking about the Smurfs. I know, weird, right? Smurfs. There's lots of them. They wear pants, they got their little hats on, the whole thing, but there's hundreds of Smurfs and only one girl Smurf. <laughs> and I've never seen Smurfette pregnant. How the hell are they still creating Smurfs? <laughs> Do these things not procreate? I don't know. I've never seen uh, one pregnant. I've never seen, you know, there's not a Smurf called Horny Smurf. I, I don't know. The Smurfs are weird. I always like watching them. I love Gargamel and Nacriel and I just, I don't know. It's just one of those weird things you think about on a Friday, you know? Anyway, those are some things I think about while I'm driving. Peace and love. I know, I can be a weird cat sometime, that's for sure. Well, thank you so much for joining us this Friday night. Go have some fun. Pop a little whatever, smoke a little whatever, have a good time. And, of course, if you're in a place where we're in lockdown, get that takeout, support your local business. They're going to appreciate it. And it's, you know, it's a way of us all sticking together, right? That's what you got to do. Thanks again for listening and watching and hanging out with us on this Friday night on the Justin McDonald Show podcast on TalkCast PDX. Peace out.